Hey guys, it's Woody the Unexceptional Gamer, and I thought I'd give you guys a headset buyer's guide. Christmas is coming up, it's sort of this season. I've been sitting on this idea since July, but I wanted to, uh, to hit the timing right. So here we are. Now before I get into the current headsets on the market, I talk a, a little bit about my history. I have had the X4s, the X41s, and the Astro A40s. Those are the ones I personally owned and gamed with a lot. Uh, this headset guide, by the way, if anyone's not a sub, is geared towards gaming. It's not geared towards movies or music or whatever, although I will mention them from time to time. Uh, I have had, although all of those are surround sound headsets, I have put them in stereo mode. In particular, at one point I had the optical cable routed through my TV and, and uh, it didn't save the 5.1 surround sound. So I've had experience with um, stereo headsets in addition to surround sound headsets. And I think that makes me fairly well versed. I wish that I had owned every headset of the market and I could be a true pro at this. But um, here I am and this is the best I can do. <laughs> and uh, I hope that you enjoy it. So here we go. The first headset I want to look at is the X11. I won't spend too much time on them except to say that they're stereo, not surround sound, but that gets you most of the way there. I've tried it with and without surround sound. I can tell you they're pretty close. Maybe 80% is good. And like any headset, the benefit to you is that you can hear game sounds better than you would over, say, TV speakers or even a surround sound system. I have a, a video where I compare those, and I can put a an annotation on the screen about now. If you want to see that video, I'll put a link in the description as well. But... Um, headsets do a better job of letting you locate where sound is coming from than a surround sound system does. I promise you it's true. The other thing a headset gives you is uh, what I guess I call audio privacy. So uh, from your family's perspective, like if you're gaming in the area, they don't have to hear we're losing Bravo for the 101st time again and again and again. And those repetitive game sounds that might be really interesting to you, the gamer, but are kind of annoying to hear uh, in the rest of the house. So the stereo headset or any headset does a really nice job of, uh, of making the gaming experience just yours and not uh, you know, annoying uh, all the people around you. So the X11 is a good entry-level set. If you get it, you, you probably won't regret it, but there are other ones to look at. Next comes the Turtle Beach PX21. All the things I said about the Alexa X11 are true with the PX21 also. It's wired, it's stereo, it's the same thing, but it has a few advantages over the X11, and they're not necessarily performance related. One is that it works with the PS3. I think it's $20 more, by the way. It works with the PS3, and that's a nice deal. It's USB, so that, that's how it gets its power. And it should also work with your PC, which is nice if you ever want to get into YouTube commentating or have conversations over Skype or all those things. Now you have a mic and a headset that one makes it private, it and two provides much better audio than it would uh, otherwise like i think uh, half the guys on our i think turtle uh, wings of redemption uses this for his gaming and he also uses it for our podcast so um so the audio quality is there and uh, it does a good job of getting you in the game and, and on the ps3 and if you don't have any need for this outside of gaming and you're on the xbox you're probably just as fine with the x11 but the px21 for an extra 20 dollars gives you some extra flexibility the next headset we talk about is a Xbox exclusive, and it's the X31. So the X31 is the same as the previous two, except it's wireless. Now, I've owned wireless headsets. I've owned both their um, infrared wireless and their um, radio frequency wireless, their RF wireless. And um, here's the deal. The infrared has a problem. The bonus of the infrared, which they don't sell anymore, is that it was cheap and... Um, and it worked fine. It didn't it didn't interfere with the other electronics in your house. On the downside, Plasma TV sent uh, infrared signals, so there was this constant buzz. And it used to be that the brighter maps in you know on gaming would send more infrared interference into the headset, and you get a louder buzz. And it was a bit of a problem. So then they went to radio frequency, which is what all their current ones are, the RF uh, wireless. The upside of the radio frequency is that the sound is better. They claim that it's CD quality sound. It's really not. Uh, there's still some hum, and you still hear some background noise, especially if you're turning up loud. But um, the sound is much better than it was on infrared. The downside, and, and I have this from experience, the uh, if there's a lot of radio frequency interference in your house, then they don't work. So um, I'm going to sort of group together the next one here, the X41, which is the one I actually owned. The transmitter on the 41 is weaker than it is on the 31. And that means that you're more likely to have trouble with it than you are on the X31. And you have to sort of judge that the geek runs really strong in my house. So we have all kinds of cordless phones, microwaves, uh, you know, routers, computers, sending signals. And, and uh, so my house has a lot of wireless stuff going on. And the 41s flat out didn't work for me. They they said that um, they, they, they couldn't fix it. I worked with support. I went through the whole knowledge base. There was no cure to it. And part of the problem was that my wireless router was right there with my gaming setup. So when the headset went to pick up the signal, it had to receive, it had to, the wireless router kind of overpowered it. And here's what the symptom was. Every 30 seconds, 
like clockwork. You could look at the clock, you could watch the second hand sweep, and every 30 seconds there would be a loud click, and it was intolerable, right? It'd be painfully loud click, like a bang maybe, and then followed by a second and a half of silence. And what the headset was doing is it was switching channels. There's like 11 or 13 channels that it goes through. And every 30 seconds, it would look and try and find a better channel, one with less interference. And uh, on your wireless router for your computer, you can turn it down from, I'll say, N to G you know, to, to lower it. But even that didn't fix it in my house. So the deal was I had to return it. The X41s flat out didn't work. I, I spent maybe 10 days using them and trying to convince myself that this wasn't a problem. But um, when you get, you know, audio raped every 30 seconds for 10 days in a row, you, you start to you know, realize that as much as you wish these worked for you, they don't. And uh, every 30 seconds, they change channels, which was a click bang type thing followed by silence and it ruined my gaming experience so uh, if they were good you know in between those 30 seconds then that would be a viable headset the x41 and if wireless is a big deal to you maybe you don't want to have wires all across your living room floor all the time for kids and dogs to trip on then they'd be a viable set the x31 which i'm talking about sort of here combined is um has a stronger transmitter. So it has a better chance of overpowering your, say, wireless router as it tries to get the signal to your headset. But, um, uh, you know, I, I had kind of stuck on surround sound at the time and I went for something new. But um, the X31 and the X41, the key difference here is that the 41 is surround sound. So this is the first system we've looked at that uh, makes an attempt to take that you know, optical signal that's fed into it and decode it and turn it into surround sound. So we're going to talk about that more on the Tritons to give you a feeling for it. But um, the X31 and 41, both viable headsets. Uh, when you get into the X41, we're $200 here, so it, it's no joke. You do pay a premium for it being wireless, but in certain environments, it's worth that premium. Uh, I, oh, the other thing is they eat through batteries. I, I think you know they went through AAAs, if I remember right, and I probably got about four or five days out of gaming before I had to replace them. And then, of course, rechargeable ones are going to last even less long. You're not, not even as long. But um, on the upside... Uh, rechargeable batteries and you can use them again and again so if that's your thing that that might be a viable option but they do chew through batteries more than you might expect so the wireless is nice uh, there is a buzz that you'll hear especially if you turn the volume up and you do have to look at your house if you're playing right next to your wireless router then you might want to just go for wired and, and avoid yourself the heartache but let's keep moving on and look at more of these things so now we're up to the Triton AX Pro and AX720. And I know I'm going to get myself in trouble at this point, but uh, I'll do it anyway in an interest of making the best video that I know how to make. The 720 is the one you want. So here's the difference. When you simulate surround sound, or when you make surround sound in a headset, you have two choices. You can either do it with multiple speakers, or you can do it through simulated surround sound. On the surface, you would think that multiple speakers is the high-end way to do it. You put three speakers in each ear cup, one sort of front, one directly on it, and one behind, and uh, you, you pump the music through, and you'd think that separate speakers would be better for directionally locating sound than using one speaker and having that pretend to directionally locate sound. The thing is, it's not. Um, the score's kind of posted. Everyone out there uh, does this. Uh, the, the simulated surround sound has sort of been proven to be better. One reason might be that when you do simulated surround sound, and when you do real surround sound like the pros do, then you have to cram in three tiny crappy speakers. And when you do simulated surround sound, you can use one quality 40 or 50 millimeter speaker. And because of that, uh, you get better sound. So let's talk about the 720s some more. On the good side, the 720s are often thought of to have even better sound quality than the Astros. And uh, there's one guy on the web, I, I don't know if I'll find him for you, but he does a really good job of putting like audiophile equipment next to them and showing how music or movies play better through the 720 than the Astros. And I think the same would be true of gaming. So the 720s really do have high quality sound. Uh, they really do a nice job. On the downside, and this is why I don't recommend them, there's two. One, the mic is not known to be as good as some of the other headsets. And the bigger issue is their durability. I don't know anyone who's used these for any significant amount of time, except maybe Hutch, who um, who hasn't had durability issues with their Tritons. They always run into trouble. Everyone I know, it's just something about their design. The mic start failing, the thing starts falling apart, and it's trouble. So if they could get that worked out, then they would have a really viable headset on their hands. As it is, I just can't see spending that much money 
and not getting a headset that lasts. And also their, their support is not as strong as say Astro's is. If anything goes wrong with your Astro, then they tend to just fix it, send new parts for free and you're good to go. Uh, with Triton, it's not as good an experience. So, um, uh, so anyway, the sound on these is great. Uh, if a big part of your headset experience is music and movies, and in addition to just gaming, and you know yourself to be sort of the calm guy who doesn't get upset at video games, who doesn't buck back in his seat when he when he dies, or you know rage your headset off your head, then these might be a good set. If you're the sort of guy who does have a harder time groping with them, um, or you know coming to <laughs> coming to grips, I don't want to say groping, coming to grips with them um, with his headset then uh, or with his deaths or his frustration while gaming then this is probably not the set for you because they're gonna break and uh, you know even calm guys break these things I don't know why they're so fragile I wish they get it worked out so 720s great sound okay Mike horrible durability just ruined and um, and that's where I stand on these things if you have them in your experience is different feel free to leave a comment but uh, you know I know a lot of guys with these things and they they've tried them and then sort of moved on so that's where they are Next comes the Astro A40. So the wired version of the Astro A40 dominates the gaming scene. You'll find almost every top major league gamer using these things, and uh, they're pretty nice for just hardcore gamers as well. This is the one that I use, and I've been using for almost a year now, or about a year now, actually. One of the nice things about the Astro is that you can hook them up via USB to your PC and um, via optical cable to your Xbox, PS3, or, or whatever at the same time. So. Uh, one nice thing for me is that like I, sometimes I record my in-game commentary along with the uh, the PS3 or Xbox sounds themselves, and um, it can do all that at the same time. So it can record my voice to the PC, send my voice to the Xbox, and uh, do all that at once. So that's really nice. It's a feature that not all of them have. Um, as far as sound quality goes, it's near the top. Uh, like I said, some people argue that the Triton 720s are better than the Astros. So uh, just the fact that there's some argument there tells you that maybe they're about equivalent. But um, the Astro sound quality is very good, and the mic is <laughs> never criticized, right? The mic is near the top. I will say that I put a little muffler on my mic, one of those little fuzzy foam things so that it didn't pick up the sound from a ceiling fan which is over my gaming setup but aside from that i've been really happy i will say that the wires on this system are outrageous there are two wires leading into the mix amp there are two wires leading out of the mix amp and then there's a fifth wire that leads from the headset to the uh, gaming controller uh, unless you're on a ps3 at which point you know it goes wirelessly or something but um there were a lot of wires associated with the system. So when I played in my living room, that was kind of an issue. You know, every day I would take these wires, drape them across the, the coffee table, and the dogs would run through them like uh, really bad limbo dancers. And that was an issue. Now that I play at a desk environment, the wires are no big deal at all. I just kind of tuck them behind my monitor, and, and I'm happy. But uh, that's something for you to consider. Now, there's a wireless version of the Astro A40. And I don't know if Astro has done anything to make them better than, say, the Turtle Beach wireless version. I do know they have the mix amp right there, you know, at your side. It's a, it's a little maybe better or higher end experience than, say, an on cable you know, adjuster for voice and chat. But um, uh, they do it their wireless a little differently. Maybe it's better. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But uh, but it's out there as an option now. There's a wireless Astro A40 version. And uh, so the, the Astro A40 is the one that, that I think is still considered king of the hill in gaming headsets. But let's look at some more anyway. Well, one thing else to call out before we move on is that this headset runs about $240 or $250. So um, it's a pretty big investment if you're going to use them. Um, these make the most sense for people who use their headsets every day and you know, maybe even for people who have a dual purpose, right, for gaming as well as Skype or video chatter or whatever it is that, uh, that you want to have some sort of private audio conferencing. So uh, really nice in that respect, but uh, they're pricey, so I thought I'd call that out. Next up is the Astro A30. So the A30 is the first over-the-ear design that we've looked at so far. All the previous headsets that we've looked at cover your ears and sort of surround it. This one sits on top. Uh, and I generally think of that as a lower-end headset, but some people have a preference for it. So, you know, that's that's your, your guide. Um, 
It uses the same mix amp that the A40 does, which means that you have the same wireless available option, and this mix amp is often considered the best in the business. Um, you know, For all the, the things that, that come and go about headsets, it's kind of universally agreed that the Astro mix amp is the best there can be. And even guys who have a preference for other headsets, like the Turtle Beach competitive headset, which we haven't looked at yet, and um, or the Seinhauser headsets, which we haven't looked at yet either, they uh, they still prefer the Astro mix amp, and you can use that mix amp with with any headset. It just plugs in via standard whatever that is, two and a half millimeter jack or three and a half millimeter jack. So um, uh, this is an over the ear Astro headset. It's good. It's not meant to be their best one, but it's kind of neat. But uh, to me, it doesn't really stand out in any way. It's uh, it's on the market and not a not a mistake. But um, yeah, let's keep looking at headsets. I call this one out kind of um, in respect to the PC gamers of the world. Uh, most The PC community has kind of centered around the Sennheiser HD 555s, or usually just called the Sennheiser 555s. And um, uh, these are a great headset in terms of audio quality. They, they might be the best audio quality in this review. Uh, I've had them on, and we own some high-end uh, Sennheiser headsets in my, in my family. And... Um, because uh, my, my son has audio issues, so we, we have a lot of good headsets around. But... Um, uh, in terms of gaming, I have to wonder what PCs or users are thinking. These have no mic. And, and some guys use clip-on mics on their shirts. Some guys modify these things to add a mic. But uh, in my personal uh, realm of thinking, if the headset doesn't have a built-in mic, it's a non-starter. I don't care how good your, um, you know, your audio quality is. And you can plug this thing into an Astro mix amp and get a really great immersive experience if you're maybe a single-player only guy. But if you're into online gaming... Throw this thing out the window. Get something that has a mic. You're not even in the game if you don't have one. So, uh, so that's where that stands. So finally, I'll take a few seconds here to uh, to bottom line this all. Uh, if you have a lower budget, sixty to eighty dollars, then the X11 or the PX21 will both be good choices. They they have good mics. They're durable and um, they they have stereo sound. But I promise you, that's nearly as good as surround sound. If you have a medium budget, then the Triton AX720 is $130. It, uh, it has great sound. It has an okay mic, and just be careful with it. And then uh, if you have a high budget, if this stuff is, or maybe you're, you know, it's a stretch for you, but this stuff is critically important to you and you use it all the time, then you can't do much better than the Astro A40. They are still king of the hill. And uh, that's my recommendations. I hope that you found some value in this video.